Welcome to the 8th lecture on computational geometry. Today we want to talk about Delaunay triangulations and height interpolation. So what is the problem that we want to consider? Let's say you have a topographic map here. So you have some map of part of Europe and you also want to show for all the points what is the height of this point. How far above absolute zero is it? To do that you have to measure for every single point in Europe what is its height. Of course that's way too much. So instead we only measure the height at some points and then we interpolate for everything in between. So let's say you fly over some area and every I don't know maybe 10 meters maybe 100 meters you do a measurement how far above the absolute zero are we here. Then we get some measuring points that tell us for these points on the plane we know what is the height of the topographical map here. So we now have some three-dimensional points and if we want to draw it then we project it onto the plane and then we get our map. Now for all the points in between we still have to figure out where is it in three dimensions. So we have to interpolate in between. And for interpolating, let's say, this point here, we don't want to look at all the points that we measured, but only at a few close ones. So what we usually do when we want to interpolate this is that we use a triangulation of this point set. And then for every edge here, we only have to interpolate between the two points that it connects. And for each of these triangles, we only have to interpolate between the three points that build the triangle. And then we can locally interpolate what our coordinates are, what are the heights here, and we get a pretty good solution. So what is the definition? We have some set of points in the plane, we for completely forget about the height for this now, and we want to have a triangulation that is a maximal planar subdivision with a vertex set, which is the input points, and that means that no edge can be added without crossing. So how does that look like here? For example like this. We have all these connections and whatever edge we want to add here, as long as we draw it as a segment, we will always get a crossing. There are three observations we want to do. I mean, there is a reason this is called a triangulation. That's because all of the interfaces are triangles. Whenever we have any face like this that's not a triangle, then we can still add one edge to it and then it's not maximal because we can subdivide the plane even more. What else do we observe? The outer face of this is the complement of the convex polygon. If you look at the boundary here, this is a convex polygon, but this is the convex hull of our point set. And everything that lies outside, that is the outer face. And outside this convex polygon we cannot add any other edges without adding crossings. So we want to find a triangulation of our point set and this leads us to our first result. Let P be a set of n sides, we call it sides again now like earlier so that we don't have any confusion between input points and points in the plane and they are not all collinear. If they are all collinear then you can only add a path between them and that's it. And we assume that h is the number of sides on the convex hull, or on the boundary of the convex hull. Now we want to figure out what is the complexity of this triangulation. So how many triangles and how many edges do we have? Can you find bounds on that? Well, this is a planar subdivision, so it's a planar graph. All the interior faces are triangles and we know from Euler's polyhedra formula if all the faces are triangles then we have exactly 3 and minus 6 edges. That's for any maximal planar graph. Now there's one face that's not a triangle which is the outer face. And we have h vertices on this outer face. How many edges would we have to add such that this also becomes a triangle, such that all the faces become a triangle. 
If we have three vertices on the outer face, then we don't have to add any. If we have four, then we have to add one. If we have five, then we have to add two, and so on. We can just take one vertex and connect it to all but its two neighbors. And then we would get a maximum planar graph where all the faces are triangles. So the number of edges we have to add is h minus 3. That means we have in total 3n minus 3 minus h edges here. And now if we plug this again into Euler's polyhedra formula, then we also get that we have exactly 2n minus 2 minus h triangles in this triangulation.